Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers and advice from industry experts. Together, we're gonna work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. Hey friends, and welcome to our last episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast for 2022. We are mid-December. It is getting busy, isn't it? So today as another coffee chat break, another coffee break, and I wanted to share a little bit of insight, I guess, uh, into, into a little bit of recap of some things I've been asked a lot about personally. And inside my mastermind and my Level Up Mastermind group, we have started our sessions, our our meetings with asking each of our members inside our mastermind group um, what their wins, insights, lessons, and struggles are currently. And normally they're from, you know, one meeting to another. And uh, I'm going to go over mine with you. I'm going to share that today. I think um, I think it's important to maybe share kind of where, you know, not a, not a wrap up, it's not a year in review, but just uh, to let you know, I'll let you know a little bit of personal stuff here today on our coffee chat. So I have my coffee, I hope you have yours. I am excited to share these things. It's a really good reminder and your takeaway hopefully will be um, that you can sit down and take a little bit of uh, information when you do a recap of your own wins, insights, lessons and struggles. And I'll, and I'll tell you, it's a little bit difficult sometimes to sit down. So I'm going to try to make it quick. It's a coffee break after all. We don't have hours and hours. We have things to do, right? You got you got people to serve and gifts to wrap, I bet, and all the things. But let's uh, but thank you for spending a little bit of time here with me today. And um, before we get going, I did want to remind you that Retail Made Simple, that is my signature course. It's an on-demand course. You can go and grab it right now, is uh, open but it's also got some great bonuses until the end of the year. I've decided to add some really big bonuses because I truly believe that this is a really good course for you to get set up for success for 2023. So the bonuses, actually, I should share the bonuses. We have a small group coaching session that um, just for people who buy Retail Made Simple this season through, through December. I also have... I'm offering a personal shop audit. So this is me getting my eyes on your business. So for everybody who books before the end of the year and decides to jump in and say yes to a successful 2023, I'm going to give you a little bit of a reward and do a shop audit for you. So that is my eyes on your business. I look at your socials and your websites and the what you're putting out into the world. And I give you a one page personal feedback. Sometimes are a little longer than one page, but some action steps that you can take um, immediately and that, you know, you can work towards, especially as you work through a retail made simple. So my retail made simple course, y'all know if you're just hearing about it for the first time, it is the course I created to that I wish I had had when I was trying to put all the puzzle pieces together when I was trying to figure out what I should do next like what is the next right step in my business and what should I be doing Um, we talk about being boss the first module is all about being boss and being the CEO of your business you know it's the hard there's all the things that are important and it's one of the most foundational modules I think um, we talk about in the second module, understanding our retail math and and why it matters and, and just getting a little bit comfortable and understanding all those numbers and how we can pull the levers in that in those um, by knowing those numbers so we don't waste our time right so we know what we're doing in our numbers and I know it's hard and and you're not the only one who might struggle with your retail math it's not it's not an uncommon thing it's the number one thing that retail retailers finally admit that they just need some help understanding inventory and all the things Um, in the third module we talk about feel good and aligned marketing and sales and why I say feel good and aligned it's because it's not a cookie cutter do these 10 things and you'll have super duper 
retail. Everybody needs to do it their own way. And there's no one right way, but there is a right formula to it. A formula in that there's some right questions to ask yourself. So make sure you're doing all the things, but in ways that feel good to you. So make sure you're attracting and engaging and nurturing your clients and all of those things, but you can do them your way. So we talk about that in the third week and the third module. And in the last module inside Retail Made Simple, it is a planning and time management module, right? Hands up if you had wish you had a little more control of your time and where you spend it, how you spend it, and what you should be doing, right? And how to just kind of corral all those ideas that are in your head. And that's what that module is about. So that is the foundational course that I have. And then we can continue the conversation that stands alone. You can run Retail Made Simple, take that course, take some time over the holidays and in, maybe into the first of the year when it might be a little bit quieter for you and just get all of those pieces put together. And then um, join the inner circle is where we continue the conversation and you can get more coaching with me. So the standalone Retail Made Simple is fine. It gives you all of the things that you need. But if you want more, join us inside the retailers inner circle. It's where we continue the conversation from the course. So hopefully that makes sense. And then there's more modules and more trainings inside, you know, to sort of build upon what you'll learn in Retail Made Simple. And also I have a mastermind group. You know that the applications are still open. We have a couple of slots open as of recording this. I'm recording this in early, uh, early December. But as of this time, we have a couple. I'm just looking at my list here as I sip my coffee. And um, we have a few spots left. Not a few. We have a couple of spots left. So, um, but and hopefully if that's something that interests you, just reach out to me and we can chat, book a time. We can talk about it. Let me know. Also, if you're wondering if Retail Made Simple or the Inner Circle is right for you, just reach out, DM me on Instagram or send me an email to wendy at wendybatten.com. Anytime. Let's chat. I can tell you if it's right for you. I'm never going to steer you wrong, my friend. I promise. Okay, so let's jump in to, um, I guess, my personal wins, insights, lessons, and struggles. And I'm going to share at the end what I'm most excited about for retailers and for myself into 2023. So my friend Richard Ralston is a progress coach. And Richard, uh, and I'm trying to get him on the podcast because he's so phenomenal. And I, I belong to a uh, an accountability group with Richard, and he's amazing. And he brought this sort of structure to our progress group. And um, I love it. And I've implemented it into my, <laughs> my mastermind group. My words are hard today. I guess I have not had enough coffee, my friends. So what we do before at the beginning of every mastermind group is now we've just started this and I love it wins insights lessons and struggles and the reason that we do this is it's really powerful it makes us sort of take time to acknowledge what are our wins what are the insights and by insights I mean like what you know um, can what have, what have we observed lately? What are we, what are we watching and what are we seeing happening lately? Lessons are actual things that we have learned, the knowledge that we have learned recently and being truthful about our current struggles. And honestly, just taking a minute to acknowledge those things for yourself and writing them down on paper is really powerful. And it's a really powerful thing inside my accountability and mastermind groups. And I'm, I just wanted to share mine today with you. So I took some time and it actually, it's funny because it was hard to sort of corral it from the year. And the reason I'm sharing this, I had a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of listeners, and thank you listeners for asking, and a lot of my members and people that I coach and that kind of thing, conversations, uh, asking me, you know, my take on some of these things and do I have struggles? And I've shared some of mine on the podcast before over the year or two, <laughs> I don't want to be in our thirds, almost in our third season. So I just wanted to share, um, I guess I'm going to just share mine with you. So I'm going to start with my wins. And this is sort of the highlights from the year. And it's not everything. There was so much. It's been a, it's been an insight. It's been a, it's been a good year. It's been a hard year. It's been a weird year, but it's been awesome year. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how all of that can happen at the same time? So some of my wins, my, one of my biggest wins is my, decision I think to uh, go back into heavy coaching with my coaches I felt during COVID and during all of that I sort of 
put a pin in a lot of that. I still had coaching. I've always been, I've always had a coach. I've always had a couple of coaches, but I, 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 I invested heavily this year back into higher end coaching and with real determination um, of what I wanted. So that really felt good and that was a win. But one of the coaches I invested in this year was again with uh, Jeff Shaw and I've mentioned him here on the podcast before. And he is a really big believer and even sent out a, a what's going right journal, he even mailed one to me, you know, what's going right. And I, I just sort of flipped back through my what's going right journal. And, you know, it's the wins journal and it's, you know, it's daily. And I try, I try to consistently fill it out daily. And what I notice that what's going right and what's really exciting to me and what just lights me up. I have a big smile on my face right now. I hope you can, hope you can hear my smile is that consistently and almost daily, I acknowledged um, when a customer or a client, like a retailer that I'm working with, had a win. And when I see your wins, when I see, you know, people from podcast listeners and clients and mastermind members that share with me that, you know, they've had their biggest revenue day or they, you know, managed to hire their first big team, you know, they had their big team meeting or whatever the win would be. It's usually I get a lot of uh, weekend texts and Voxer messages from my, you know, my clients, but I also get a lot of comments on the podcast and, you know, love this episode. It was so helpful. It helped me, you know, realize this and this. And that really makes me feel great. That's a really big win for me. And that might sound self-serving, but I'm just telling you what it is. To me, that was on my highlight reel and my wins. Um, and I'm also a really big win this year is that I am working with clients I love. I'm working with retailers that I love, <laughs> I love working with. I like them. I want, I'm so excited for their futures and for your future. And I love, you know, just, I just, it just feels good and aligned and right and i'm excited about that 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 is a big win for me a couple of other wins um that i wrote down here a podcast thank you very much my friends for listening to my podcast and sharing uh and sharing it it's the downloads are going up like substantially every week so that's a really big win i busted through some fear this year of maybe and, and I'll, I'll explain it a little bit more i must struggle but one of the fears uh, that i had is um, not fear, I guess, I don't know. I just, I took action where I was a little bit nervous or felt out of place. And I mean, that's always how we grow, right? And I talk about this here and I tell my retailers and I tell y'all to do that. But for some reason this year, I had some hard, I had some hard time seeing myself at the next level or whatever. I don't even know if the next level is the right word, but I ended up going to a conference in Florida. I was invited to go, you know, as an exporter for the, with the Canadian government. It was just, it just seemed like, what, <laughs> you know, as a woman exporter, I'm like, I'm an exporter. And it was very, so that was a, like a fear, not a fear buster, but it made me bust through some, um, some ideals maybe that I had. And that felt good. I consider that a win. I had a fantastic business year. I'm really excited about everything that's been going on in my business. And my husband works with me now uh, full time. So that's exciting as well, too. Not without its struggles, you know, <laughs> as we all have. But we've always worked together, but now in a different format. And it's been really exciting to plan for 2023 and some exciting things that we're looking forward to there. Uh, what else? Oh, I wrote here on my notes personally. I also I took an RV trip. <laughs> It sounds we bought an RV and we did, you know, a, almost a month long trip. You know, I was able to work and take time and I really focused on just sort of being present and it was really great. So we took a month and had a wonderful uh, trip to Newfoundland, Canada, uh, where family was. So that was really wonderful. And I've been really attentive to my health this year. I've been really trying to eat well and get back into the groove. I feel like maybe COVID kind of I don't know. Yeah, you know, kind of I kind of got off track on a lot of things. So there's been a lot of wins. And another big win that I wrote here are the opportunities. And this is also a fear busting thing. And I hope this encourages you. It, it's almost impossible to think about what's possible. Maybe that sounds weird. But <laughs> what I mean by that is things happened this year that I couldn't have imagined happening. But I just and I and I, again, like you can't you can't imagine. So one of the things that I was asked to do this year or that an opportunity that happened again from stepping into some fear was um, the opportunity to have Joe Packham from What Women Create 
come on my podcast. That was a really big thing when she said yes. And the fear was, you know, I literally just asked her. (laughs) I was like, she's probably going to say no. Why would Joe Packham? And my story, and I think I've shared this in the podcast, but if you don't know, um, one of my very beginning sort of back way back in the day like years and years ago was reading her business magazines what women create business and um just reading through that and i and i won't go into the whole story but i mean that was a catalyst of um empowering me to feel like hey i can do that i can i can have a business from creative and i used to read her magazines and get inspiration from her and her magazines and you know and other people the two biggies actually were miss mustard seed marion parsons and joe back in the day for me and you know of what's possible and of just the next step of business and both of them i you know i'm traveled i've traveled the world with marion and i've worked with her and now you know, Joe was on my podcast, but so she said yes. And that was really thrilling. And then she asked me to be on her podcast. And I was like, holy moly, that was exciting. And then she's asked me to write a business column starting in 2023. I've already got the first, uh, first drafts are all in and everything's in. And I'm excited to even share this, but she's asked me to be the business uh, writer and write a column inside what women create magazine it's like crazy pants to me that that's happening first one comes out in the spring um these magazines they work really far ahead (laughs) so that's exciting and there's been other opportunities too um just from asking and being in the room with other people and i'm there's just so many i I don't want to you know again this isn't a really like i don't want it to be like a braggy post but i'm i wanted to share my wins because that's part of the wins and insights and lessons and struggles so that's uh just a few of the wins and there's been again so many other wonderful things um, happen and I'm also one of my big wins I wrote down the last one I guess I'll share with you here is I'm I have a crystal clear vision or plan of what I what I want for 2023 and beyond and that hasn't always been the case I try to plan and I you know have ideas and and, and again I'll talk to you about that in my struggles part but I have a crystal clear vision and I hope for you that you can have one for your 2023 as well, especially, you know, when you know what you want, it's so much easier to take action. If not, we sort of sit in in decision. So that's been some struggles and I'll share that again. So on observations and insights, well, I call it insights, but really that is really observations and things that I have, you know, conclusions I have drawn is... Um, we don't have to be cookie cutter and this I see over and over again with my clients and by that and and for myself by that I mean there are business foundations and again refer back to retail made simple and some of the you know you have to have your retail math you you know there's things we have to do (laughs) we have to have our ecosystem going we have to have marketing we have to have products we have to have customers there's things we have to do but how we do them and how we get there is different it doesn't have to be like everybody else. And that has been a very big observation for me. I see my clients morphing and shaping and building these beautiful businesses. And I, I've been doing it too. I've been trying to do things. I don't have to do it the way maybe other business coaches are doing it. I don't have to do it the way, I don't know, all the gurus on whatever tell you that you have to do it. There's lots of ways to run your beautiful business. And as long as we have the foundations and we have a plan in place, like a plan and, you know, we have to have a plan, (laughs) you know, I'm a planner, but we don't have to do it in a cookie cutter way. So that has been a big insight for me. Um, I, another insight is that I've realized that surrounding ourselves with good, good. And by good, I mean like being super selective of who we surround ourselves with. I see that from my, my, clients I see that for myself I see that for family I just see it for everybody just really being intentional about surrounding yourself so for me I have really chosen to surround myself with quality coaching I've invested in like really good coaching and I I'm surrounding myself with clients I love to work with so that's a big thing and you know what allies and I say allies because I realize it's not really networking. It's not really just friends. It's like people who really see the value in what you're doing with your business. Those are your allies and you want to have as many allies around as you can. And I have been 
super grateful for all the allies, you know, including you listeners that share the podcast, you know, taking a screenshot and sharing it, that, that is, that's just, just phenomenal to me. And that's, you know, having people that, that do that for you and having people who share your work and your, you know, for in your, so in your shop and your business, you know, having customers that are your allies and having coworkers and people down the street and friends and people that are your allies. And I love that's my word, not my word for 2023, but it's really top of the list of understanding that that's important to have allies and cheerleaders in your business, right? So that's been a really big insight for me lately and uh, and over the year. And this last one, um, it might sound funny, but understanding that we need to, I need to play bigger. And that's not just for me. So understanding that I've been playing small and I didn't think I was because I am a doer and I do things. And um, so this is a big one. (laughs) This is a big observation and insight. And it's kind of come from, you know, some coaching and some other things, but realizing that I need to play bigger and not play small and and to take the action. So even though I'm a doer and I'm always, you know, trying to, you know, whatever there, and there's lots to unpack there, but that's a whole podcast episode in itself, but not to stay small. And I encourage you as well to, um, and one of the things, you know, I asked myself, one of the questions was, um, uh, am I doing, you know, if you had asked me a couple years ago, are you doing everything you can do to grow your coaching business? I would have said yes, yes. And then I realized, like, I look back now at two years ago and I'm like, oh my gosh, no, there was all these other things I, you know, I, I was able to do. And I mean, even again, just asking people like Joe and, and different people to, you know, be on my podcast or or. I don't know, expand and whatever. It's the same for your business. Are you doing everything you can for your business? It's a powerful question. And, um, you know, two years ago, if you had asked yourself that, we always think we're doing enough, right? But no, there's that next thing we probably should be doing, right? There's that next thing we need to play a little bit bigger, right? We need to play a little bit bigger. There's one more thing we need, you know, there's the next thing. And it's like, oh, I don't really want to. There's no growth in our comfort zone. So that's been a big lesson for me. Okay, so lessons. I guess that was an insight. <laughs> lessons. I'm going to move on. I did not mean for this to take so long, but I'm sorry, friends. Hope your copy's not cold. Um, all right, on this, uh, my lessons now. And lessons, I, I kind of consider that like knowledge that I for- formulated, you know, from other people. So a couple of lessons, just uh, really quick. Investing. Investing in coaching, as I mentioned earlier, has been huge for me this year. So investing in coaching, investing in teams, investing in um, business growth, my travel and my trips and, you know, just taking that leap and, and investing and being and trusting myself and investing time. Um, I've been, you know, really making a point to take time to plan and <laughs> surprise, surprise. I know I talk about it a lot, but sometimes we get busy in the busy, right? So I've been taking really good time to plan. And I've also been taking time for my health and my mindset. And I've been taking time for like reading every day, which I kind of put off even though I love it I just was putting it off so those are really big lessons for me that you know I see that's knowledge that I've gained and it works and I'm going to keep doing it um I've take I've really my one of my lessons my my yearly lessons this year is that I need to raise the bar and that's you know, kind of goes back to that not playing small. So I need to get over some fear of, uh, you know, raise the bar on my tech skills. I mean, I yes, I hire it out, but also I need to stop saying I'm not good at tech. I need to figure it out, right? <laughs> so yeah, I need a sip of coffee. Hang on, guys. Okay, so hot coffee, coffee break time, right? So I also, um, so I, I got over my tech. I have to get over my, you know, my fear of, just the next level stuff, right? So being invited on stages is great. And then now it's like, oh, I've been invited on stages. I actually have to stand up and speak. And I've spoken on stages before, but I, I need to get more comfortable. I need to raise the bar on that and how I do it. I need to raise the bar on my team. Um, I need to raise, I need to get bigger and better. And I, that's what I wrote down here um, because I really want to help more retailers this year. I really, truly believe that I can't help people if I'm not 
you know, growing. If I'm not growing, I can't help more retailers. So I'm excited about that. I also, my lessons this year were on, I became a better decision maker. <laughs> Took me almost into the fourth quarter, but I'm getting better at it. Uh, and a big one is as well that I'm capable and that I wrote that down and that might sound dorky, but um, I am capable. I know I'm capable and I need to really um, trust myself again, you know, whether it's tech or decisions or focus or time management, I'm like, I am capable of this. So, and I'm capable of helping more retailers and I'm capable of all of this. And I have to remind myself of that. And I think, and I'll talk about my struggles in a minute. I think that comes in. And so I have to remind myself of that. So that is a lesson learned. And I also have learned how to focus on what I call, um, or what I've written down as my wild, my most important, my wildly, oh, what did I write down? My wildly most important goals. And um, that has been, again, back to that clarity, getting clear and clarity. And I hope that's something that you have for your business as well, too. It really helps us focus. So, I, you know, it took me a lot of sort of really focusing in to understand all that. So um, that's all that. Okay, into my struggles as we move through. Okay, so hard to... <laughs> I don't know, hard to talk about struggles, isn't it? But I ask my retailers to share this when we do our mastermind calls. And so I'm going to share mine. So one of my ideas, I have too many, one of my struggles, I have too many ideas. And again, I share strategies and tips and ideas here on the podcast and in my groups about that, because it's really hard when you're a multi-passionate, creative person um, to make this to have ideas like take all these ideas because we can do all the things right so I you know that kind of goes back to the decision making too I need to take my ideas and make strong decisions so the whole getting clear thing and I've struggled with that all year this year has been really weird for me I don't know why I haven't been able to get clear and corral all my ideas so that's been a struggle my idea parking lot is full. I'll tell you that right now. We are into overflow. <laughs> I have so many ideas and I know I can't do them all because I can't execute them all and they're not all the right things at the right time. So anyway, we have whole, we have podcasts on, you know, how to narrow down your ideas, but that has been a personal struggle for me this year. My, another struggle is, um, imposter syndrome. And I don't know if, you know, if you know what I mean by imposter syndrome, we all get it. I know we get it. I, coach enough people. I'm in enough coaching groups. I know that every human, even the most, you know, incredible humans I know have imposter syndrome at one time or another about what they're doing, about where they're going or what, what people think. I don't know. And I struggled with that this year and it's weird. You know, we all have it a little bit, but this year felt hard. Um, I'm just like dishing all the dirt here today, I guess. But, and I know everybody else, but in my head, it was like, everybody else has it together. Everybody else is bigger and better. Everybody else has better website. Everybody else has, I don't know, coaching groups that are better and they're doing things better and faster and whatever. Um, and what am I even doing here? That like literally rattled in my head. And, you know, I coach people on how to do this, but yet here I was. So I've realized, you know, that that's just something I have to, you know, say no. So I've read and I've been coached on it. And, um, you know, one of the things I need to remind myself is I'm not for everybody. It's okay. And sort of back up to where I shared, um, you know, one of my observations is that we don't have to be cookie cutter. I don't have to be doing and neither do you, right? If you ever struggle with this, we don't have to be doing what everybody else is doing. What am I even thinking? Right? So I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. So there's that. <laughs> so thought I would share that. So again, and I'm not for everybody and that's okay. And, and not everybody's for me. So it's wonderful. And that's a wonderful composition um, or place to, you know, share, to share from, I guess. But anyhow, if you ever struggle with imposter syndrome, no, you are not alone, my friend. We are here too. If you're ever wondering what you're, you know, what am I even doing here? So we all go through that. And there is, you know what? There's, there's going to be somebody looking like they do it better and newer and faster and whatever and fancier than you do. Um, but that's okay, right? Because they, I'm sure there's things that, you know, well, I know, I'm not even sure. I know. Um, I know that they have things as well too, that they are wishing they could do better and faster and different. So that's okay. I've kind of dealt with that. I'm okay with it now, but it's, it's, 
truth, just being honest, it's been on, it's been a struggle this year. Um, oh, impatience. So I've been struggling with impatience. I don't know why. Um, I'm impatient for things to happen. I'm impatient to get my website cleaned up. We're working through that right now. I'm impatient to see the results, but I'm seeing that I'm seeing from the work that I'm doing and I'm seeing it in like little steps, but I'm still missing it. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm impatient to get my team really cohesive, but we're, you know, we're, we're, we're building it. We're getting there. So those are all the things that's all, you know, things that I think I'm, I've just been struggling with. So just being honest. Okay. I know this is going long for a coffee break. I'm so sorry, my friends, but anyhow, okay. What am I mostly most excited about coming up? I wanted to share that with you. So I am mostly excited about working with retailers this year and shop owners and being part. And, and this comes from one of my clients telling me, um, she shared with me that, and I believe this too, the ripple effect of the ripple effect of for her family and for her community. And I love that analogy. I love being part of a ripple effect. And so my coaches lean into me or pour into me and I want to pour into you either with the podcast or with coaching or however. I'm very excited about all the things that are coming up in 2023 and seeing that ripple effect happen. So when I'm stronger by, by taking my coaching and then I pour into whoever I'm working with, then your family, because it starts with our families, right? We're all family oriented businesses. It starts with our personal families and then our families help our communities, our shops being open and healthy and, you know, running a successful and you can hire people and you can support the community and econ you know, the economy of your community is important, but also the, um, the emotional side of your community as well, too. So I love being part of that. I love seeing communities grow. I love it. That makes me so happy. So I'm really excited. I'm very excited about the continuing that and on a, on a, I'm growing in a bigger scale this year. So how many more retailers can I help and serve? And I love that. Um, I'm very excited about, um, the small shop explosion that I see. And by that, I mean, I'm seeing that the big boxes can't do what we do. They cannot connect. They have been trying. They have been trying to emulate. They have been trying to copy. They have been trying to do, and they cannot connect the way we can connect. So I am feeling really great about that. I am seeing it I have a lot more to say about this in the next year, going into next year, but I'm really seeing this um, small shop explosion, even though I know you're thinking, oh, you know, you're nervous or whatever about what's coming. I'm telling you, my friend, hang, like hang, don't hang in there, like thrive through this because the big boxes are not doing what you're doing and you are amazing. So I am excited about that, like super excited about what I'm seeing already happening in my mastermind group and my members and I just love it. it. makes me excited. I'm excited about speaking in person this year at a few conferences. Um, I meet, I've been invited to uh, the National Self-Employment Day in May. I've been, I have a meet, I have a meetup with my mastermind members. I'm so excited. The, the, the retailers that I've known forever, I'm just so excited that they're going to be able to meet up together. And my mastermind, uh, one of the masterminds that I'm, I am in, we are meeting up. Uh, and I've been invited to speak at uh, a few conferences, including the H&H &H conference in uh, Chicago. Chicago in June. I'm very excited about that and a few other like trips planned. I'm so excited. Um, and personally, my daughter's coming home for Christmas. So as you're listening to this, I hope I'm cuddled on a couch with her right now. She hasn't been home for Christmas in seven years. And I know that's very indulgent to share here, but I'm very excited about that. So um, she's in New she lives in New Zealand. So I'm excited that she'll be here in Canada with me for the holidays. And I'm excited. So I know this was long. I'm so sorry. Your coffee's probably cold. Got to get back to work, right? So thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. This is our last regular post or episode for 2023 or 2022. I won't be back until 2023. Oof, time's flying, isn't it? And I am so incredibly grateful for you listening. I'm so incre incredibly grateful for you sharing with me all of the things that you share with me and for sharing the podcast with other retailers. I am hoping you are having an amazing season and December has been so good to you. You deserve it, right? You deserve it. You've been working so hard, I know, and I hope it's been amazing. I hope you have time 
and I hope you're planning. I don't hope, I hope you, I really hope you have a plan in place to enjoy through the holidays with your family and loved ones and whoever's important to you that you get a chance to have a little bit of downtime and a little bit of holiday eggnog or whatever you you just a little bit of cheer whatever lights you up thank you my friend for being here thank you for listening and sharing as I said and um, if I can support you in any way do not forget about the bonuses that we have with retail made simple I would love to do a shop audit for you I would love it I would make my it would make my year Uh, we will be doing the shop audits into um uh in, in January so you know lots of time take a deep breath you got lots of time to uh to get to that so have a wonderful rest of the month and we will be back with some phenomenal I have some great podcasts lined up for January and beyond but until then my friend have a wonderful happy holiday season Uh, love you all really do thank you for listening well that's it for this week's episode of the creative shop talk podcast I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week, and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week.